Alright, I want to talk about how you go about changing your orbits in Rogue System. Flying spaceships in outer space is not just some floaty kind of business where you just drift from planet to planet, uh, most of the time anyway, but you have to whiz around rock balls, planets, moons and stars in general in orbits. If you're not in an orbit, you're quite likely currently falling to your death towards some rock ball. So, how do you go about flying from one place to another? Well, basically by manipulating your orbit. You see, for example, this picture here with two different kinds of orbits in one. Imagine we're flying along the path of the innermost orbit, along this inner circle around this whatever type of rock ball this might be, and we want to change our highest point in our orbit, the green dot, so that it gets even higher. In this depiction, we're flying counterclockwise in the direction indicated by the big fat arrow, and if we accelerate in our forward direction exactly on the red point, the green dot will start to moving away from the planet. The apoapsis, the point furthest from the planet, will move away from the planet or whatever whatever we're, we're orbiting, as long as we accelerate. And thus the green dot can be moved until it reaches the blue colored dot, and our orbit would be changed to this, the, 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 the bigger uh, thingamajig, the ellipse, right? And that's the uh, way of changing your orbit, which is maybe the easiest to understand, really, and, and uh, which is the method by which satellites and spacecraft quite often, or most often, I don't know which, alter the orbits in, in our day, in our modern day, really. The maybe most common method of transferring orbits is called the Hormann transfer. Say, for example, we are orbiting this rock ball in the direction indicated by the arrow, along the orbit labelled 1, and we want to change our orbit to orbit number 2. We would do that by making some kind of rocket burn in our forward direction, for example, at the red point. After the burn, we would get a transfer orbit, like, we would basically do what we did in the first picture, increasing our apoapsis until it, well, reaches some uh, desired height. And, um, we literally, we get a transfer orbit, right, and it's literally an orbit which, which transfers us to our desired orbit. In our case, uh, this, this transfer orbit is labelled 3, this red orbit. If we then want to circularize our orbits, that is, make our orbit perfectly circular, we then have to make another burn exactly on the blue point. The apoapsis of the ellipse on our direction, in our direction of travel, until the red dot has risen high enough above the rock ball surface that the periapsis, point closest to, to the planet, is equidistant from the planet's surface uh, as compared to the uh, apoapsis. All right, and that's how we would go about uh, going from one orbit one to two via the upper half of orbit three. Uh, this is rather is is one of the easier kinds of transfers. At the same time, it's not super trivial or anything, of course, but there sure are more complex ways of, in which you can make orbit transfers. But the fun thing with Rogue System, Rogue System though, is that the flux drive is so powerful, you might, you might not need these sometimes fancy and most often time-consuming maneuvers to change, ma to change orbits. I guess, I guess you can. I guess you can call this the chop-chop, uh, the, 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 the chop-chop 
transfer maneuver or something like that. In, in this one you just basically power up your flux drive, uh, go in whatever desired direction you want to go in this for example if we want to go from from uh, the height indicated by the red dot up to to the height of orbit number two we would just phase um, the pink dot go there until we've reached some halfway point between uh, the red and pink dot and reverse our our acceleration and slow down so we don't whiz away into space and uh, yeah finally we would just fiddle around uh, with our uh, orbit to, until we have circularized it and uh, if you if you even want to circularize it at all so you guys so I guess you could be fooled into thinking that Hallman transfers might be redundant in uh, Rogue Sister but since all components and I think it's safe to assume the flux drive is included in this list, can be damaged, you might be forced to use these techniques. Hopefully not for interplanetary travel, though, as these could possibly take years to complete, I guess. <laughs> anyway, as a final note for my brainwashing kind of thou shalt laugh science kind of sermon, I guess it's worth pointing out that since Lagrange points are enabled in rogue cis, it's, it could be possible to make so-called low energy energy transfers. It's um, exemplified by this this diagram of uh, the path of a satellite, which the which NASA uh, had it transfer through. <laughs> uh, they they essentially utilize some mathematical simulations to predict the path of two satellites around the Earth, Moon, Lagrangian points. When they were going on their many ways around those those trajectories, they were technically neither orbiting the Earth nor the Moon. I don't quite understand how that magic works, but using these NASA man managed to put their two satellites into lunar orbits and managed to do so using very little fuel. Like these satellites had precious, precious little fuel. Since Lagrange points are effectively a thing in rogue system, that means that space stations could be put in orbit around planet to star Lagrange points, and uh, players could maybe use, make use of these for low energy transfers as well. I, well, I, I stress maybe only because utilizing them can be super hard since they seem to be kind of unstable in nature but above all due to the flux drive we don't even have to necessarily bother with them really but it's still kind of interesting that you can do these kind of fancy schmancy things in in rogue system So we have here a perfectly circular orbit. I'm gonna make a Hallman transfer to change the radius of our orbit to let's say 1,200 kilometers. And because it's perfectly circular, this orbit, we don't really have to worry about whether we're at the periapsis or apoapsis because, well, it's periapsis and apoapsis is pretty much everywhere on the orbit because it's perfectly circular. And we start off doing the transfer by simply pointing towards the prograde direction. Hold up a little bit, like that. And we set off. Skip most of this transfer. Uh, the 
data transfer from uh, the periapsis to the apoapsis where we will make our second burn to inject ourselves into the higher orbit will take about 50 minutes of in-game time which I will be powering by in, uh, well, I don't know, that divided by 5, so uh, 10 minutes. <laughs> I'll have to make a cup of tea while I'm waiting. Notice our zenith angle is 88 degrees, meaning that it, we're rising up slowly, slowly above the ground. And our altitude is, of course, approaching the apoapsis. We want to make our second burn where the altitude reaches the apoapsis. Alternatively, you can uh, think of it as we w of a burn which we want to do when the zenith angle goes back to 90 degrees, when we are parallel to the ground below on this moon, or planet, or whatever it is, this rock ball. We are kind of approaching our apoapsis, and our zenith angle is pretty soon close to 90 degrees. We want to wait until we're almost exactly, only just exactly before the apoapsis point. If we start increasing, if I just thrust carefully forwards with the RCS thrusters, you see the apoapsis will increase. So we want to wait until we're maybe just about before we get there, we can start use our regular thrusters. Our zenith angle is still a little bit off from 90 degrees. Because the difference between our apoapsis and periapsis is uh, rather minuscule, the uh, zenith angle, the change in the zenith angle is really slow, so if the uh, apoapsis was maybe 10 or uh, up to a hundred times greater than our periapsis, if we were one, if we wanted to make a, for example, a breaking burn at periapsis, we would the zenith angle would uh, change really quickly. Carefully start to make this transfer burn. And you see the apoapsis is almost, almost, oops, isn't changing at all. We can actually go back down a bit. And it's not perfect, but the periapsis is close enough to the apoapsis. Now, to make a perfectly circular orbit, you would basically use these side thrusters to just fix this a little bit. You can just play around a little bit. Let's see here, if I use the side thrusters, you get uh, not quite what we want. There. Going uh, a bit side to side, then backwards and forwards, fixed it, and uh, well, uh, <laughs> our current altitude doesn't really match neither apoapsis nor periapsis, so Either of these numbers are wrong, but you, whichever the way, we have something which is as close as circular in orbit we can get actually now. Just as I promised, well, I hope this this is kind of right. Oh, yeah, it looks more better. Like at 1200 kilometers altitude. There you go. 